Hi everyone, um, my name is Camelia. I am um, a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner, also known as a PMHNP. Um, I'm also a nursing and mental health enthusiast. Um, and today I just wanted to get on, I know that I have not been on in quite some time, um, and I have endeavored over the last month or so uh, to share videos um, and information about the psychiatric interview. Um, so I have taken a little bit of time away um, and haven't done a video in a while, but today I just want to continue um, with that series. Um, and this will be a short and sweet video. Um, today we'll talk about social history and why some of the components of that will be important uh, to mental health. Um, but we've already talked about uh, introduction, chief complaint. We've talked about obtaining the psychiatric history from the patient. Um, psychiatric history for family, so family history. Uh, we've also talked about medical history, which was the very last video. Um, and today we'll talk about social history. And so again, I'm just chunking these different components of the interview so that you can get just a clearer idea or understanding about um, the questions that are asked, sort of why they're being asked and sort of how to tie all of that together. Um, so if you haven't been able to see those videos, the next, the, the last four or five videos have been specific to the psychiatric interview. Um, but again, today we'll talk about social history. Um, so social history, it goes without saying uh, what information you want to know from the patient is about their employment. Um, so what I typically ask patients is, tell me, um, are you working or doing anything during the day? Um, and really what uh, I'll ask patients also will be uh, just information about the, the type of job that they're working. Um, there are some conditions that may impact how they function at work. Um, you may also have patients that have been able to keep a job or to maintain the tasks around a particular type of job uh, because of their mental health concerns. Um, so things that you know fall in this category would be um, severe anxiety um, as it pertains to stress or depression. Um, sometimes concentration and focus can be a consequence of that or lack of concentration and focus. Um, so those are the types of things that you want to kind of get a clearer understanding from the patient. Um, you also want to know um, their highest level of education. That can give you an indication for um, kind of where they've been um, in terms of their uh, learning and their learning process. You may have a patient, and I hear this quite often, that they sort of learned about some of their mental health concerns when they were in college. And so a lot of times you may hear patients say that they stopped college courses or um, that, that they were not able to continue um, for particular mental health reasons. Um, also, you wanna know legal, legal history, legal issues. Um, I do get very direct with patients about this. Um, I usually ask questions uh, such as, do you have any legal charges? Do you have any legal charges pending? Um, many times patients, I found that they are open and honest about this, um, but specific things that um, you may get from a patient are related to things like a DUI. Um, what does that give you? That gives you information about substance abuse history. Um, so that's just one example. Um, you also want to know their living arrangements. So I, I usually ask patients, are you living with anyone else? Um, are you married? Do you have any children? Um, or does anyone else live with you? Um, many times you may find and patients may share that they've had relational, you know, concerns or relational dynamic issues um, related to mental health reasons. And so it really just helps you to put things together um, for uh, the patient. Um, you also, along those lines, want to sort of explore patient social support. Um, many times I ask patients, uh, who would you say is good support for you? Um, many times they want to know what that means, and I'll say social or emotional support. Who's good social or emotional support? What does that tell you? It gives you an indication uh, for the patient's mental wellness and sort of an indicator for um, whether they may fare well or fare better based on the, the, the lack of support or support that they may have um, or that they feel like they have. Um, so that's also highly, highly important. Um, those are really the big biggies for um, social history that I obtain. Some of this can get sort of intertwined in other, other parts of the interview. 
Um, but again, this is short and sweet. It's really self-explanatory, but really understanding why are you asking these questions? And it really just helps you to understand more about the patient's function. So what we're getting at here is how is this impacting your daily function or is this impacting your daily function? Um, and it gives you some context for the patient's daily life, okay? Um, this video is short and sweet, but you guys may have found other ways than other things that you ask patients here. Um, again, there's no real, you know, black or white kind of boxed way to do this. Um, this is just sort of the way that I found um, that's been helpful. Um, if you guys have comments or questions, or if you've have if you've had a way that's been more helpful for you, please share that um, so that we can all benefit from that. Um, I hope this video is helpful. Um, again, go back and look at the other videos if you have not. My goal is to eventually get to a point where we're going to tie all this together. Um, I will have a few more um, just uh, short videos that will talk about other things. So coming up, my goal is to talk more about sort of the present signs and symptoms and tie back in the chief complaint. We'll talk about substance abuse history, um, and then we'll go from there, okay? You guys share comments, questions, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you.